Mr. Chair. Uh, I'm very pleased to be a member of this subcommittee, and I appreciate working with the chair and ranking member, particularly when we have things that we agree on. Uh, unfortunately, right now, I'm going to rise in opposition to this bill. Uh, in my opinion, this bill hurts farmers. It hurts rural communities like the ones I represent in Maine, and it puts nutrition programs at risk and so much more. I'm sorry to see that it also feels a little bit like Groundhog Day with harmful riders from the initial FY24 bill, many of which we removed in that bill eventually, but they are appearing again. Once again, it hurts our ability to fight the climate crisis by slashing funds for climate hubs and climate research. It cuts the Sustainable Agriculture Research and Education Program, which is known as SARE, by $3 million. Since 2019, Maine has received over $3.5 million in funding from SARE, critically important to many of our small farmers, benefiting more than 5,000 farmers in my state. These funds have supported such things as wild blueberries, which I know you all love, uh, hemp, potatoes, seaweed aquaculture, and more. The bill also zeroes out funding for the Office of Urban Agriculture, which supports so much, including composting and food waste reduction projects. Last week, they announced a $5 million grant to enhance urban agriculture and innovative production methods. Zeroing out funds for this office stifles innovation. It hurts urban and rural communities alike. I'm also very disappointed to see an $8 million cut to the value-added producer grant program. Farmers in my district have used these funds to help expand processing and marketing of their products from goat milk to blueberry crisps. These grants play a crucial role in increasing, in increasing farmer income, and this cut will impact farmers' bottom lines. Once again, there's a rider to prevent the USDA from implementing the rules to protect farmers and ranchers from anti-competitive behavior in the meat and poultry industries. These are common sense changes to ensure fairness and competition, such as requiring poultry companies to be transparent with growers about how their pay is calculated. This was attempted in FY29, we blocked it, and we will continue to fight to stop this again. I do have concerns that uh, while the bill uh, increases the WIC funding from FY24, that the proposed $7.2 billion falls short of the president's budget request of $7.7 billion. At a time when food prices have risen dramatically, we must ensure all eligible WIC participants can access nutritious food. I'm mostly deeply concerned that the $37 million cut for the Food and Nutrition Service to carry out nutrition assistance programs. These funds are critical services. Uh, they're used for critical services required to deliver the USDA's 16 nutrition assistance program. Services like financial and grant management. This includes this new summer EBT program, which relies on this funding for implementation and oversight. And the SNAP program relies on this fund to deter and prevent SNAP benefit and fraud. SNAP integrity is something I think both sides of the aisle find important. And when people are stretching every dollar to count at the grocery store, when SNAP benefits are just $6 a day, why would we tie the hands of the USDA? And why would we hamper their ability to ensure SNAP integrity? The bill also provides only $80 million for the Emergency Food Assistance Program, $15 million below the requested level. In Maine, food insecurity grew nearly 3% from 2021 to 2022. And these TFAP accounts... TFAP accounts for nearly 20% of the food our food bank, or the Good Shepherd Food Bank, distributes. And in 2022, only 35% of Good Shepherd's cost to distribute TFAP were reimbursed. That forced the food bank to divert already scarce resources to fill in the gap. We can and must do more to attempt to end hunger in this country, and this is going in the wrong direction. Last, I was appalled to see the incredibly concerning rider to allow the use of electric shock devices as treatment for people with disabilities in the language that passed at the subcommittee level. I'm glad the language was removed from the bill in the manager's amendment and am committed to ensuring that the FDA has the ability to regulate these dangerous devices. The hour is late. I will yield back my last 22 seconds and uh, again, thank the chair for recognizing me.